He's a South African human rights activist who's taken on some of the world's political elites. On his way here to the World Economic Forum, he warned that the abuse of power by the powerful must stop. Kumi Naidu is the Secretary General of Amnesty International. I sat down with him here in Davos. Kumi Naidu, Secretary General of Amnesty International, thanks so much for being with us. Thank you for having us. Now, you lead the world's largest human rights organization in the world, Amnesty International. Where does human rights, though, fit here in Davos, the annual meeting of the, the elite, as it is known? Human rights should be at the center of the conversations at the World Economic Forum, because who do we want to have an economy for? We want to have it for the human beings that live on this planet. But sadly, the way the conversations happened at the World Economic Forum for a long time, uh, like for example after the global financial crisis, the sort of DNA of how they move is about system maintenance, system recovery, system protection, when what we really need in the world to ensure this economic justice and economic and social rights uh, alongside civil and political rights is to have a system redesign of our economy, a system innovation and a system transformation. But you said you want to make sure that the influential elites in Davos do some serious soul searching, especially when you consider that half of the world's population, certainly in the global south, live on less than $5.5 a day. You want to hold the, the powerful accountable, but how exactly do you do this? The short answer is with extreme difficulty because uh, our business leaders to a large extent are suffering from a really acute dosage of cognitive dissonance, which is a psychological condition where you deny reality. I mean, let's take one reality. Less than two months ago, the UN climate scientists, the most biggest climate, uh, sorry, environment, uh, research enterprise in the history of humanity tells us that we have 12 years to get emissions to peak and start coming down before we hit catastrophic climate change. You would have thought people here yeah, then would say, hang on a minute, we've got 12 years. How do we save our children's future? And yet you say that there are serious threats that are represented by some of the politicians we actually heard speak here in Davos, the populist leaders like the new Brazilian president. You've sharply criticized him. What threat does he really pose? Well, in his election, he enjoyed, actually, you could see it in his face, when he was attacking women, uh, Afro-Brazilians who are in the majority in Brazil, by the way, people don't know that, that more than 50% of the people in Brazil are Afro-Brazilians, meaning they have African slave roots. We uh, saw an attack on young people, civil society organizations, and by the way, Already in 2014, he did an interview when he said, if I become president, I will make sure that I kick amnesty out of the country and so on. So this guy, his package is anti-human rights. I mean, I mean, sure, but instead of taking on specific leaders, shouldn't you and others be focusing more on uh, the conflicts that we're seeing around the world, the global refugee crisis? You focused on the uh, Myanmar situation, but what about the situation in Yemen, in Syria? Why don't we hear more about all of this? Well, we need to be able to walk and chew gum at the same time and we need to also be able to have as many balls in the air and ensure that they're there. You're absolutely right to raise the issue about Syria and Yemen uh, and the tragedy of the Rohingya people. All three issues we are working on intensively. I myself went to Raqqa, Syria just two months ago to uh, document the impact that ISIS and US-led coalition bombings had. Sad to say, actually, even though ISIS caused huge devastation, the devastation caused by the bombings in terms of destroying people's homes, killing large numbers of people, not providing any compensation. Sadly, the US coalition's bombings had more deaths and more destruction and so on. So for all of these reasons, uh, especially the migration crisis and the refugee crisis we have more uh, specifically, requires a human rights approach and this, these are core parts of our focus. But you can't disconnect uh, Bolsonaro from the question because you know one of the first things that he did? The global migration pact that was agreed in Marrakesh just in December, one of the first things he did was to pull out of the global migration pact. So in that sense, the positions of personality and the issues are actually connected. Kumi Naidu, thanks very much. Thank you very much.